I literally think this motorcycle might be the perfect commuter bike, period, bar none. We'll get into all the details though. Oh man, what a fun month it has been. What's going on guys, Chase on Two Wheels here and in front of us I have the 2023 Zero DSRX. Zero, of course, the electric motorcycle company, probably the biggest electric motorcycle company on the market right now. They have let us loan this DSRX for the last 30 days, and today I'm going to be doing my 30-day review. I have been riding this thing every single day to work, to do whatever I do as a regular-ass person, uh, and that's what today is all about. What is it like living with a Zero DSRX? Now, if you guys have never seen our one month reviews these reviews are not details about the motorcycle if you guys want to see that that's over on our first ride and i'll have a link for that in the description below this video is more about all the little nitpicky things that i have noticed throughout the month of riding this thing i will say because of the scheduling and where i'm located i have not got to do any off-road stuff as you can see the tires are not necessarily ADV tires. So this is going to be an entirely road review for this motorcycle. If you guys are looking for off-road review, unfortunately I was not able to do that this time. Bro, <laughs> this bike is something you guys need to be watching out for and we have tons of stuff to talk about in today's video. Now guys, before we get going, let's talk about a couple of the visual things on the outside of the motorcycle before we get riding on it, because it's not safe to do that while riding. Now, first off, when we got this bike in, you noticed this like light green color. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. As I've been riding this motorcycle, you know, constantly coming out to it and just like seeing it and then going off on a ride, I've really grown to like this color a ton. You guys can let me know in the comments. Obviously, this is a video. We have to color green this footage we're gonna do as best we can to make sure this video and color looks the way it does for me it's just a color you don't see that often in a motorcycle but the green kind of fits in with the whole like nature -y vibe it's an electric so there's no noise it's i don't know why i associate na like electric motorcycles with nature but the green kind of helps me do that now another thing that i did not think was gonna be a big deal Typically on a motorcycle, like a regular ice motorcycle, this is where the gas tank is, right? We all know this. But since this is a battery operated, this thing gets to be a cubby. I didn't think I would care about the cubby, but because Georgia is Georgia, in the mornings it's 45. In the middle of the day right now, it's 85. <laughs> so I end up using this for my, I got my rain pants in here. I've got a hoodie on in case I'm cold in the morning. I freaking love the front pocket. I even have a GoPro battery in here somewhere. That is a feature I didn't think would be a big deal. And it has turned out to be so awesome to have use of that because sometimes I don't have a book bag on me and I need to grab something like from a gas station or something that is perfect I, I absolutely love it and i know there's a honda motorcycle out there that does the same thing very cool absolutely one of my top five favorite things i know it's stupid we got this twenty four thousand dollar motorcycle and yeah we'll talk about that and that ends up being one of my favorite but hey it's the small things in life, my man. All right, so guys, looking over the motorcycle, that's about it for the stuff. Uh, I do want to talk about the menu system uh, once we get on the bike here. Actually, let me get my phone on the quad lock. If you guys are looking for a phone mount for a motorcycle, I don't trust any motorcycle mount except for quad lock. Your phone actually pops on and it don't go nowhere. Don't trust your phone with just any phone mount. Grab a quad lock. We got a 10% discount code in the comments. <laughs> or the description, I guess. I could put one in the comments. Uh, let's get the bike turned on and let's talk about some of the things I'm not a huge fan of with this motorcycle. So guys, starting out is the menu system. Now, you guys can see the screen right there. The menu system is fine. And what I mean by that is I don't have any necessary problems with it on a motorcycle that costs $24,000. I don't want a fine menu system. I want an elegant user experience that I enjoy using. When you have the bike on and you're going, you can't even get into the menu system. You have to be not moving and you can actually you have to have, be not moving and that turned off. You have to hold this in 
and now you get into the menu and you only have left, right, and click in. This is, again, fine. I just feel like there's a better way to do that, and I hate that it's just the back and forth. If we had a joystick up, down, left, right, and in, I think it would be far simpler. I do feel like the screen looks good, but a problem with this screen, actually here, the sun might be in a position to where I can show you guys. Nah, I can't get it in the right position. The sun's not low enough. I was headed home from work one day and I noticed that the screen, I could not see anything. The sun was behind me shooting this way and it totally whited the screen out. Now I get like in certain situations, you're not gonna be able to get around that. It is something I noticed and if I noticed it, I want to bring it to you guys to let you know about it. So yeah, that's the screen. Now I do wanna give zero props. The modes that I would need while riding are easily accessed. So if I got the screen, I got the bike in a position where I can go now. Okay, so if I hold the button to the left, I get heated grips, which like I told you guys, it's 45 in the morning and 90 in the afternoon. So heated grips are nice. If I go to the right, it will change the traction control mode, which is really cool. And then if I hold the button in, the mode button will start blinking and I can go left to right and change the mode which is pretty cool. Those are the main things I need to be doing on the fly. And I feel like Zero did a solid job setting that up. Again, I just wish there was a more elegant way to go through the menu that was more user-friendly than it currently is. All right, guys, you'll have to apologize. It's hot as heck, so I'm gonna just ride around this parking lot and talk about these buttons real quick. So uh, the buttons, like I was telling you guys, the buttons are fine. Fine would typically not be a problem, but when you're talking about a motorcycle that costs $24,000, I feel like I as a rider or as a user of the motorcycle, I should expect a, pr a more premium feel than those buttons are giving me. And I currently don't get that with the current buttons. I will say as far as usability goes, the buttons have had, I've had no problem using the buttons at all. I wish I got more like click when I pushed them, but I've never been in a situation where I'm like, oh no, I can't tell if the, the button pressed or the button didn't work. They've all worked fine and I've had no problems there. I just, I want a more elevated experience than what I'm getting. Is it bad that I just want to sit in this parking lot and like try to do U-turns? <laughs> like the bike has so much maneuverability. Look at that turning radius, absolutely freaking lovely! All right, we gotta stop with that. We should probably go ride on the street and talk about this thing. <laughs> actually, let's let's not ride it like a jackass so that we can actually get some range out of this thing. And that's gonna be the first thing we talk about is the range on this bike is surprisingly good for at least for what I've been using it for. Alrighty guys, uh, let's talk about the range real quick. Now, the range on all electric bikes, at least to the current state, they are not amazing on paper. Now the DSRX supposedly gets 100 and I think 80 miles of range if you're riding like like this, like slowish speed. And then it drops to 100 miles of range for a full charge if you're riding highway speeds. Those numbers are decent for the category, but in everyday use, they're not amazing. Now, luckily for the Zero, the majority of the riding that I've been doing has been kind of slow back roads on the way to work. I have had no problem with the range. As you guys can see, we currently have 62% of the battery left and we have a range of 70 miles. Now, I'm currently in eco mode, and we'll talk more about eco mode and how I feel about it here in a minute. The range has been solid. I, I sometimes charge this thing at the shop, but the range is so good that I get to the point where, like typically with an electric bike, I would be kind of worried about the range and I would always keep the charger with us because, you know, there's a little specific charger that you can just plug this thing into a wall with. I would typically keep that charger on me at all times because I have range anxiety. I have no range anxiety with this thing. I just ride the hell out of it and it's had no problems. My goodness gracious! <laughs> Woo! Oh my god, this is too much power for my childish ass. I've had no problem with the range and you guys know I do not ride easy. I, I try to and I do the best I can, but I have a problem. I, I, I enjoy riding motorcycles. They bring me the most joy in life. I have a problem riding in a little hard, but this bike has done really well in the range. 
and I can ride to and from work basically all week and I don't even think about the range. So when I get to a point where I don't even think about the range, that's when I know we're getting into that territory with an electric motorcycle that I can really have a good time with. Because if I'm thinking about the range, I ain't thinking about the enjoyment that I'm having on the bike and that kind of ruins the experience. Alrighty guys, uh, next thing I wanna talk about are the modes. Now the bike has like five modes and I have found myself gravitating to two of them and I'm gonna explain why. It's canyon mode and here's my explanation. Oh, that's a cop. Let's not... Oh wait, we're on an electric bike. No! <laughs> Alright, stopping. Stopping. Calm. We're calming down. We're not accelerating quickly. But God, it's so easy to. This bike has many modes. I will now account them for you. Rain mode, eco mode, street mode, sport mode, canyon mode. There are a lot of modes here. And the main things that I have noticed that they change is how much power is given to the throttle and how much engine braking or brake regen on a bike like this you're getting. Now with an electric bike, it's kind of cool. You don't have engine braking, but you have engine regen, which basically spins the motor in the opposite direction and it charges the battery. I think because I'm a old, I'm a normal motorcyclist and I, I expect to have engine braking on my motorcycles, I have found that I gravitate towards the two modes that give me a similar feeling to that, and that is eco mode and canyon mode. Basic difference is eco mode gives you engine braking, but it tapers the engine down a lot, obviously to make it more economical. The more hard you ride an electric bike, the worse range you're gonna get. So eco mode really works with you as the rider to make sure you maximize your range. I have ended up using eco mode as a pseudo rain mode. Now the bike has rain mode, but I don't like using rain mode because when I let go of the throttle, I just coast. It's the same feeling as if I was on a regular bike and I let go of the throttle and uh, I held the clutch in and you just roll. I don't really like that feeling. I like being slowed down. And I'm gonna talk more about that aspect of like going and slowing down with no braking later in the video because I think it's fascinating and it's something I've been, I end up thinking about every ride I go on. That, <laughs> there's a road. I know you're in a big old forerunner, but there's a road. So I've gravitated towards eco mode and canyon mode. So eco mode's cool. I'm in eco mode a lot of the time in the mornings when I hadn't had coffee yet and I ain't ready for the absolute chaos that this bike can turn into in canyon mode. Now, if you want to be a psychopath, you know, there's some people out there. Canyon mode gives you full power. It puts the traction control in street mode. It puts the ABS in road and it gives you full engine braking. So an easy way to look at it is it's full power forward and full braking on engine regen. That is my absolute favorite mode. I get all the power to go this way and I get all of the power to go this way. That combination makes this bike the most fun for me. We all know the power you're gonna get out of, a, out of an electric motorcycle generally, especially a good, a good model brand one, it's insane. I'm not a technical enough guy to tell you guys the amp hours and all this kind of numberage. I can put it, look, it's right here. And Bo can put it there on the edit. Thank you, Bo, we appreciate you. So if you're an electric guy and you know those numbers, cool, there you go. But I'm not. I just know how fun a motorcycle is. And this motorcycle drives me nuts at how enjoyable it is. Speaking of which. <laughs> oh, is that a cop? That is not a cop. I love Canyon Mode. The power delivery is just, it's this odd thing. There's not really a power band. It just smoothly rocket ships you forward in such a easily controlled way. It's almost scary how controllable that much power is. And I don't know what kind of magic zero did to make that happen, but they killed it. Next up, 
<laughs> perfectly timed since we just left that road where the road was really curvy, but we have got to talk about how sporty this motorcycle is. This bike has no right being as fun and agile as it is, but my god. Alright guys, uh, if I remember correctly, this road should be a little windy. I'm, I hope I'm correct. Uh, but we need to talk about how obscenely sporty this motorcycle is and how it has no business being that sporty. When I got this bike in, you know, I lo it looks like an ADV bike. ADV bikes are fun. I've loved them. ADV bikes you can throw around a good amount and they handle their weight well, but I was kind of worried because this is an electric bike and I've never done an electric ADV bike, obviously. From the moment I got on this bike, I have noticed that, I guess it's the combination of the electric power plant mixed with the wide handlebars. Man, you can literally just chunk this bike over and it feels so incredibly good. I cannot explain to you guys how enjoyable this bike has been just full commit, just fully leaning this thing into a turn and it is so smooth how it can power you through that turn just the combination of the wide handlebars the kind of up up high and up upright seating position i just feel incredibly confident just throwing it over and the bike is so compliant it's just one of those things that i think i didn't expect it so that way when i saw it and i experienced that while i was riding I was like, bro, what is happening? Like this is, this bike should not feel this good riding like that, but it totally does. Like I told you guys, this is not an off-road review, but it has been a phenomenal bike to ride on road and I have loved every second of it. All right guys, uh, next thing up I wanna talk about which kind of is with the sportiness of it is the suspension i've been making slide adjustments to the suspension and i haven't really gotten it to a place where i feel really good with it my main issue with the suspension when i go over a bumpy section of road or with these little road snakes so much feeling gets translated through the rear tire into my butt sometimes it's a little much to the point where i'm like do I have the suspension set up in the wrong way to where it, it like, I feel like my hand is on the ground and I can feel every tiny little road change. I keep messing with it. I just can't figure that out. Like what, where I want it to be. So I don't really know if this is an issue on the actual motorcycle or if it's just my incompetence as a rider, probably le leaning towards the ladder. But it's just something, I, I love the fact that all the suspension is adjustable, that's really cool. It's probably my incompetence, that's probably my bad, but it is adjustable, you can adjust it. I just haven't had a good, I don't know, suspension adjustment on this thing yet. You know one thing I noticed guys, we're headed to the highway where I wanna do the rest of this video, but We've been out about 20 to 25 minutes riding doing this video right now. I know I said to you guys range anxiety isn't a thing, but it I don't think could be more true that this bike does a great job with energy management and range. So much so that I've been out riding an electric motorcycle. I started out with like 70 miles of range. I've only gone down 16% and I've just been riding not even thinking about it. I literally just thought about the fact that you're about to go to the highway. The range is the worst on the highway, but how's it been in the city? I don't know because I hadn't even been thinking about it until I looked down and checked it. And that's a huge deal with riding an electric bike. That's probably one of the main negatives is that range anxiety stuff. And I'm not even thinking about that. So guys, while we're on the way to the highway, let's talk about one of the other interesting things that I really like about this bike, and that's the windscreen uh, adjustment. I have found that this mechanism, it's kind of weighted and you just turn it to change it. It's super easy to do, I'll show you guys right here. So we've got it in the lowest position right now, which gives me a lot of wind flow to me as the rider, which is really cool. But if we twist it back towards me, it'll go up. One of the things I appreciate about that is it's very easy to use 
and because it's easy to use I actually use it and change it I do appreciate that it's that easy uh, there's other bikes I've ridden that it's not easy at all and if it's not easy I'm not gonna use it and if I'm not gonna use it what's the point of having it nice job zero on that mechanism I want to talk about one of the aspects that is probably ended up being one of my favorite things about this motorcycle and that's the combination of battery regen and power and what experience that is like with this motorcycle like i told you guys earlier eco mode and canyon mode you get a powerful battery regen which slows me down like it's doing right now and in canyon mode it has a lot of power the combination of those two makes this motorcycle incredibly fun to ride because you almost don't need brakes. I noticed uh, I wasn't that good with it when I started, but now that I've been riding the bike for about a month, I've got it dialed in to the point where if I, I, like, I almost don't use my brakes at all. And I know that's crazy to say, but most of the time, if I time it right and I'm thinking about it, I only need my brakes to stop me from going, I don't know, three miles an hour and lower. Everything else, I'm able to handle between battery regen and the power. It is a strange way to ride. Uh, I'm not used to that. And you know, you have engine braking, but engine braking kind of, it changes based on your RPMs and your the gear you're in and stuff like that. Whereas battery regen just slows you down. Like, look, we're going 30. I'm just gonna let all the way off. And it's slowing me down to a point where, let's see how low it'll get before I need to use the brake. Let me use the rear brake. Kind of on a downhill. On a downhill, got to about eight miles an hour before I needed to just stop. Now, if I was going on a flat road, I could time that to get to like five to three miles an hour. And it becomes this interesting little game of like, all right, it's almost like a braking zone when you're on a track. You're like, hey, I need to be braking really hard here. <laughs> With this, it's like, when do I need to let off the throttle to make sure that I stop at that point? It's almost like a little meta game inside of riding an electric bike. I think it might be my favorite thing about the entire motorcycle is that combination of battery regen and just using the throttle as your one use. Like that makes you go forward and back. The lack of it makes you go back. The input of it makes you go forward. It's really neat. Don't discount it. It's it's a good time. God, that surprises me every damn time. Sheet, I cannot get used to that electric power. All right, my friends, the arch nemesis of the electric motorcycle, the highway. Now, this is an ADV bike, it should be good on the highway, and spoiler, it does a great job as far as just riding on the highway, but this is the area that this motorcycle loses the majority of its battery region because of how fast you're going, and uh, it's probably the major flaw of the DSRX, or electric motorcycles in general. Now guys, I just wanted to be on the highway to say this part of the video. This bike loses almost half the range by going 55 and over. The battery range goes from like 180, which is great, to like 100, which is not good. I feel like this is where, this is the major factor on this electric bike is if I want to do an adventure, I have to take a highway probably to get to that location, unless you live out in the boonies. You got to find a supercharger, which if you're out in the boonies, are you going to be able to find a supercharger? I need a bike with the range that I can get to a fun road, and then I have the range still left to have a good time on that road. Now, if I was doing relatively close stuff, I don't think it would be a huge problem, but for the stuff here that I know about, it would take a ride, like a full tank, a full charge to get there. And as you guys can see, we rode around for 25 minutes and we only went down by 15%. Now we're on the highway and we've dropped eight already. That's how bad it is. And this is going 80, this isn't even crazy. Now, Zero tries to help you out with that. We're gonna go into eco mode, which I told you guys is my second favorite mode. So now we're in eco mode, so we have way less power, but we're on energy conservation. I'm gonna give it full throttle and I want to show you guys what it does. Full throttle, not a lot of power, and I am peaked out at 75 miles an hour. 
the motorcycle in eco mode will actually not let you go over 75 because it knows the second you go over 75 your battery range just drops off a cliff that can be cool i appreciate that i will say i feel the same way about that as i do how the mt10 the brand new in the 2023 model has its speed limiting control if you have that on and you don't know about it and you're accelerating expecting to continue accelerating and then you hit that speed limit you're not prepared as a rider to to stop that forward momentum and it can mess with you a little bit or at least it messed with me I'm, i tell you guys everything from my own experience if you get a zero and a dsr rig specifically just have an eye out for that and be ready if that happens it can throw you off a little bit so just be ready uh, overall i love eco mode but that that screwed me up for a minute and uh now i hope i have enough energy to get back to the shop as long as i don't take the highway it should be fine uh so guys one more thing that i meant to talk about on the highway but i uh did forget is uh to talk about the cruise control i told you guys i hate it and i know it can be done better it's over here you like hit it and hold it and it engages cruise control but it doesn't set it it just turns cruise control on now to engage cruise control you then have to squeak your little hand over here and you have to hit the button and it'll set it at whatever speed you're currently going. There's no way to make it go up that I know of. There's no way to make it go down and you can't push forward on it to make it disengage. You can only, you know, pull the brake in or something like that. Now, cruise control works totally fine. I hate that it's a button on the right side of the handlebars because I told you guys my two favorite modes to ride in are Eco and Canyon. Both of those have really strong engine braking. So that means when I let go of the throttle, I start going backward, not backwards, but like I start slowing down. To get to the cruise control button that I have to hold and then let go and then press, I almost have to let my hand off the throttle and doing that just interrupts the whole ride. We need to have cruise control over here. I will say that to every single company that puts cruise control on the right. It needs to go over here. I don't want to let go of my throttle, especially, especially on a motorcycle like this. All right, guys, uh, let's wrap up this one month review on the Zero DSRX. Is this where I'm supposed to go? All right, cool. For a $24,000 motorcycle, that's a lot you're getting into easily into multi-strata territory you're getting into gs territory at 24 grand this video has not been a fair shake of this bike except for these turns let's go where has this road been this whole time for an adventure bike that's i mean it's a lot of money period but it is on the higher range for an adv bike and from what I can tell, this thing has been pretty decent off-road from other videos I've watched. I obviously can't speak to that. I don't know if it's worth 24 grand. What I can tell you is that as far as a road-going motorcycle that would be mostly used for commuting and fun weekends, I do not know if I have experienced a more perfect commuter road bike this bike to me has been picture perfect for commuting it's got enough range to get you to work and home you get home you just plug it into the charger that you just leave there and then you wake up in the morning does it have a full charge does it not doesn't matter because it probably has the range to get you to and from work for like a freaking week without a charge that not having to think about it mentality has been incredibly fun to me i love the fact that i can just walk out of this bike every single day hop on it ride to work ride back i don't think about gas i don't think about range i feel like everything that i've been talking with you guys about all combines together to make the experience of the zero dsrx the perfect commuter bike for 24 grand you're gonna have to make a decision if that's worth it for you 
if you commute a lot and you want a motorcycle that's not going to have a lot of problems it's an electric bike your maintenance is going to be next to nothing it's belt drive so you don't even have to maintain a chain you've got all that in a motorcycle that you can just charge at home and it'll make it wherever you need to get to i kind of love it and i don't think anything even gets close to being this good that's what's been obnoxiously obvious to me while i've been uh had the opportunity to ride this bike guys and I honestly think that's the perfect user case. Go commute to work and back. If you want a motorcycle that you're just gonna get on and it's just gonna work and you don't gotta worry about all the things you typically have to worry about, all the way down to having to know how to ride with a clutch. Everything, all your worries are taken away with the Zero DSRX. So guys, those are my thoughts after riding this bike for a month. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, it would be a huge help to hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. And subscribe for more motorcycle videos. You guys let me know in the comments, what are you guys specifically looking at this bike for? Do you consider it an ADV bike that should be used for these grand adventures? Or are you like me and you're like, I don't know if it's all an ADV, but it is definitely a fun motorcycle. You guys let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion down there. And uh, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. We make a ton of motorcycle content and I'll see you on the next one. OC, thank you for getting to the end of the video. You know what to do down there. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Later. Later.